Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation. It's a great pleasure to speak in the seminar. Okay, so my talk will be about the Grotting ring of stacks, but let me start from the Grotting ring of varieties, which is a classical definition that was given by Grotting in the 60s. So I denote it by K0 var over K, where K is the, the base field. And uh, um, it's by definition, the, ab the abelian group, which is generated by, abelian, uh, by isomorphism classes of, uh, of a K schemes of finite type, modulo scissor relations. So the, uh, these relations tell us that it, um, any, any X can be written as Y plus, the cl its class can be written as y, uh, the, the class of Y plus the class of the complement of Y, whenever Y is, the, is a closed sub scheme of X. Okay. And uh, K0 of R, um, is an abelian group, but it's also it's even a commutative, uh, commutative ring of, uh, with identity, where the multiplication is defined by on the generators by uh, the direct product uh, fiber product over k, and then it's it's uh, extended by bilinearity, and uh, the one the the identity of the ring is the class of the point, and then just as a piece of notation, the class of uh, a one the class of the affine line is called the Lefschetz class. It's it's denoted by L. And uh, as a very uh, simple observation in K0 var, if e, of, if e over X is a vector bundle of rank R, then we know that E is the risky locally trivial. So it's a list, the risky locally a product with affine space. And so we can combine the scissor relations with the, the definition of multiplication to get this formula. The class of E is equal to L to the R times the class of X. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so I'm I, I will be talking about the Grotting of stacks. First of all, let me tell you what kind of stacks we're going to look at. We're going to, to look at algebraic stacks and essentially, basically only quotient stacks. So if G, uh, these are defined as follows. If G is a linear algebraic group and it acts on a, on a scheme of finite type X with any action, even the trivial action, then uh, there's a quotient stack, uh, X mod G with the square brackets. And the projection, whatever the action is, the projection is always a G torsor. The projection map from X to X mod G. And when X is just a point, we get the classifying stack, BG. And uh, it will be useful to know the open and closed sub stacks uh, of, uh, of uh, such a quotient stack. And uh, uh, they're all, they all they're all quotient stacks where uh, they all have the form y mod g, where y inside of x is open and closed and open or closed and is uh, g invariant. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Armed with this definition, with this uh, notion of algebraic stacks, we can try to transport the classical definition of uh, Grothendieck uh, to stacks. And this is what Eckel did in 2009, building the, on, on other definitions. Uh, but I will only mention Eke dots. Um, so K0 of stacks is uh, generated by classes, isomorphism classes of algebraic stacks of finite type. And then there is the technical condition with affine stabilizers. I will explain why this condition. Uh, modulo the scissor relations. Uh, so the class of, uh, of X is the class of a closed plus the class of the open complement. These are always, uh, this is, this is the, so far the definition is the same as K0 var. However, we add uh, an extra condition, which is that for every vector bundle, E over X of stacks of say constant rank R, the class of E is equal to the class of AR times, uh, times X. This was automatic in, in K0 var, but it's not automatic in the K0 of, uh, of stacks because the vector bundles of stacks are not, are not necessarily uh, the risky locally trivial. For example, even BG, which, has, which is just a point topologically, can have non-trivial vector bundles. They correspond to non-trivial representations of G. And uh, since BG is just a point, a vector bundle either is over BG is either split or non-split. Okay, oh yeah, I was, uh, so why affine stabilizers? Basically the condition affine stabilizers tell us that any such, any such stack is going to have a stratification by quotient stack. And so we, it, tell us, it tells us that we can just consider quotient stacks by the scissor relations. Okay, we can make K0 stacks into a commutative ring just as before. And um, 
well, we have a similar example to the first example. So vector bundles on BG, for example, they are, uh, they're all V mod G, where V is a G representation. And we have a formula as before, L, uh, the class of V mod G is the class of uh, BG times L to the dimension of V, except that this time we basically put this into the definition. This is not, this doesn't follow from the scissor relations. Okay. Okay, so uh, there are many things that one can do with the K0 of var and K0 of stacks. Th this ring has been used by many people in many different ways. There are many interesting conjectures regarding it. Uh, my interest is, is in computing the class of uh, BG, where G is a linear algebraic group in this ring and see what relations there are between the computation of the class of BG and other properties of the group. So as a, to get a feel for the problem, let's, let's take a look at two examples, one connected and one finite. So let's start with the, the simplest uh, case for connected groups. So G equals GM. Um, then uh, we let GM act. So how do we compute the class of uh, BGM? We let it act on a one by scalar multiplication. And then we have the, the following string of uh, equalities. So L times the class of BGM by the bundle relation is equal to the class of A1 mod GM. Now A1 uh, mod GM has, can be stratified as an open piece, this, this one, A1 minus zero modulo GM and a closed, uh, closed piece, which is just the origin. So zero mod GM, which is just, B, uh, which is just BGM. Okay, and then by the scissor relations, we have, we have this equality sign here. Now the class of the, of the first term is just the class of GM mod GM. So this is the class of the, the point is just one. And, uh, um, and then the class of BGM is BGM. So, so we get this equality, L times BGM is equal to one plus BGM. Then we can rearrange and we get that the class of BGM times L minus one is equal to one. So what do we get? We get that the class of BGM is equal to L minus one inverse a priori was not even obvious that L minus one was invertible, but we just proved it. And this is also equal to the class of GM inverse. Okay, so this is the, this is the first example. Uh, the class of BGM is equal to the class of GM inverse. Okay, the second example is a uh, new Actually, one. Would you mind, so, so just to make sure I, the definition, uh, can you go back to the definition? So you, you didn't a priori invert anything. You're just forcing your, it just, you're exactly. not realizing that this ring has yeah. The yeah, I did not invert anything, but it turns out that that uh, minus one is happens to be invertible in this ring. Yeah, by this formula here. Yeah, great. And so I can write L minus one inverse. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's consider the finite case. Uh, G equals mu n. So spec of k of x modulo x to the n minus one. When k is algebraically closed, it's just a z mod n. Uh, but over any field, the mu n acts only one by scalar multiplication. And then we can do pretty much the same computation. So L times B mu n is the class of A1 uh, mod mu n. Now there is a close, uh, the origin gives us B mu n and then the, the open complement gives us A1 minus the origin modulo B, uh, mu n, which is GM modulo mu n. And so we end up with B mu n plus the class of GM. So GM modulo mu n is, uh, G, still, is GM. And so we get B mu n plus N minus one. And so again, we can, re oh, sorry. We can rearrange uh, and we get N minus one B mu n is equal to N minus one. We already know from the previous example that N minus one is invertible. So we can simplify it and we get that B mu n is equal to one. The class of B mu n is equal to one. Okay, so the, the, uh, these are very simple examples that, that uh, one, can, one can do more simple examples and they, they, can, this kind of uh, gives up, shows a pattern that when G is connected and, and maybe small, then the class of BGM is equal to the, uh, the class of BG is equal to the class of G inverse. And when, uh, when G is finite, the class of BG is equal to one. This is just a fact. It, it, it just happens like, it just so happens in many examples. Okay. Um, okay, so um, before, before moving on, so this was some examples to, to get a feel for, for the ring, but the, actually this ring of K0 stacks is very easy to understand, assuming that we know K0 varieties. So there is a map, of course, from K0 varieties to K0 stacks. And um, uh, just because a scheme is a stack, basically. 
And um, it, 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 this map induces an isomorphism between K0 stacks and the localization uh, of K0 varieties at, uh, at L and L to the N minus one. So we invert L and we invert all the, all the L minus, all the cyclotomic polynomials. And this, um, and this is enough to, to, to give us K0 of stacks. Okay, and the example based on the, one can generalize the example of uh, BGM for, to GLN. Uh, B, the class of BGLN is the class of GLN inverse, and it is the product of L to the N minus L to the I uh, inverse multiplied through uh, I, I from zero to N minus one. So if you know the, the, the how to count the number of bases in an n-dimensional vector space over a finite field, you get the same, the same formula without the inverse, of course. So, the, and uh, this is basically, this is a motivic version of that or a K0, K0 varieties version of that. And more generally, X, the class of a quotient stack where the quotient is GL, where the, the group acting is GLN is very simple. It's just the, the class of the, the numerator divided by the class of the denominator. And um, of course, this not, we cannot expect this to, to always happen, but it does when for GLN. Is it, so how about for mu -N, the other thing was mu, mu, mu for mu -N, uh, um, for mu n no, because the class of mu uh, the class of mu n is, is n. Let's say over an algebraic closed field, the class of z mod n is n because there's n points. And so you, you take gm to gm multiplication by n, and that would give you n equals to, to one basically. Great. So in some cases, when you divide yeah. by mu n, you get the same thing. Other times, you divide by n. Exactly. That's yeah. Right. Basically, it's because, but it's because we impose the basically the fact that we impose the vector bundle relations makes this happen for GLN torsors. And uh, yeah. Okay. And then I will say more about this. But yeah, th this is a actually, for example, there, there's an alternative definition of a K zero stacks uh, by Baron and Dillon, and they basically start from this equation. So th this is a property that you want from, from this kind of K0 of stacks. In all, the in all the alternative definitions, you have this. Okay, now, I, um, so, okay, uh, so we have the class of BG in K0 of stacks and we want to compute it and relate it to other properties of, of BG. One other such property, uh, one such property is stable rationality. Uh, uh, so the definition is very, very classical in one form or the other. Uh, we say that BG is stably rational, so G is a linear algebraic group. If there, there exists some generically free representation, V, uh, so generically free means that there is an open subset, dense open subset with the scheme theoretically, uh, stabilizer scheme theoretically trivial. And the rational quotient is a stable, is a stably rational variety, okay? This is the, so BG is stably rational if there is some gen, a generically free representation such that uh, the quotient uh, of this representation is stably rational. And uh, where stably rational means that it, it becomes rational after multiplied by some affine space. Okay, the definition does not depend on the choice of B. This is a, called the, the no name, one version of the no name lemma. And it's close, closely related to the Noether's problem, the one that appears. The, the one that uh, Noether had the idea could be useful for the inverse Galois problem. It's a version of that. Noether was more was interested in the rationality for the regular representation. Here we're only interested in stable rationality. Okay, and many examples, as I, I will indicate uh, in the next slide, they, they show a, a strict relation uh, between, a close relation between uh, stable rationality of BG and the equality BG equals one when G is finite or BG is equal to G inverse when G is connected. Um, I think the examples are in, okay. So for when G is finite, for example, both of these conditions, so the, uh, imply, imply vanishing of the unramified Brouwer group of a K of V of G, where V is any faithful representation of G. So this, uh, this was maybe the first indication uh, I could, uh, so the ramified Brouwer group is well known to be an, uh, an invariant which uh, detects stable irrationality. And I could show that it also detects, detects triviality of the class of BG. 
So this was the first uh, piece of evidence that maybe the two properties are related. And uh, this prompted the question from Ekedal. Maybe, maybe, you, uh, this, maybe there's no reasonable answer, uh, but is there something you would say about unramified Brouwer groups for people who've never heard the phrase before? The answer is yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So for unramified Brouwer group, uh, so I think the, for maybe for people that are geometrically minded, the simplest way is to, to take a, so um, take V mod G. Uh, let's work, the simplest definition is over the complex number. So you take V mod G, you take a smooth projective variety uh, which is Barashian equivalent to VMOG, and you take the Brouwer group of that. And there is also a Galois theoretic uh, way, which is you have you have the, the Brouwer group of the field the KV gene variant. You have some residue maps, and uh, it's the residue maps which go to, to cohomology one degree low, where you take uh, the classes that vanish that are killed by all these residues. Okay, so there, are, yeah, w depends which. Um, if you prefer to think geometrically or Galois theoretically. Anyway, the, the question, degree is two here. So one degree lower would be one. Oh yeah, yeah. H1, yeah, yeah, but exactly. I'll get to that. Brower group is unramified H2. Yeah, I will get to that, thank you. Okay, so first question by Ekedal, when G is finite, is it true that the class of BG is one if and only if BG is stable rational? And uh, this was uh, the question for connected G was posed by Talpo and Vistoli. When G is connected, is it true that uh, the class of BG times the class of G is one if and only if BG is stable rational? Um, okay, and there are many examples where, where we know that this is true. So we have seen, the, uh, for example, for one, take it out question. We have seen mu n, for mu n is true, for the symmetric group is true, for subgroups of GL3 is true. And also in the, ne in the negative, for many, uh, for many counterexamples to Noether's problem, it's true. For example, for the counterexamples that are detected by the ramified Brouwer group, both those things are true. Both things are, uh, both facts are false. So the BG is stably irrational and the class is different from one. And in the connected case, we have another long list of examples. So we have special groups, so GLN, SLN, SP2N. And then we have um, special orthogonal groups, PGL3, G2, and then spin seven and spin eight. And, and we also have other examples. The reason that I put, uh, I start from spin seven is that the, the smaller ones are already in this list, pretty much. And may, maybe to be, be sure I understand when you say it's true, you mean that in for all of these groups, it is true that we do have a gene. Exactly, it, it, so yeah, the way I phrase it is, um, uh, the, equivalent, the, que the question is true in the sense that the equivalence holds, but in two, actually you're right, if for G in this list, BG times G equals one and BG is stable rational. It is actually a very, it's a fundamental question to find a connected G over the complex numbers for which BG is not stable rational. It's a very important open problem. So we have no examples currently. No and, examples. And no candidate, there's no. There are candidate examples, but for okay. example, the PGLN series might give some examples or the spin N when N is greater than or equal to 15. They're, Conjecturally, but um, yeah, nobody really wow. that has done it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's move to the next. Uh, so, okay. So, um, my, my first result is basically counterexamples of arithmetic nature. So, not over an algebraic closed field. Counterexamples of arithmetic nature of both. Um, so, negative answers to the question one and question two. So, let's, uh, let's get to it. So let's take a perfect field of characteristic different from two. And uh, let's assume that there is a B quadratic field extension, big K over small K. And then, so a B quadratic extension means the Gala group is Z2 cross Z2, Z mod two cross Z mod two. And so it has three distinct quadratic sub extensions, which I call E1, E2, and E3. And then I take T, T, which is, it, it's going to be the, my G, yeah, anyway, it's going to be the group. So this is called the norm one torus relative to the, to the extension E1 cross E2. Okay, so if you know what the, it's a K torus of rank three, meaning that if you base change to the algebraic closure, it becomes GM cube, but it is not itself isomorphic to, G, uh, to GM cube. And if you know what the Weyer restriction is, so you take the Weyer restriction of E1 cross E2 of GM, the Weyer restriction is, uh, of, so it's going to be a torus of rank four because E1 cross E2 has degree four. And then, 
And then you take the kernel of the norm map. So E1 cross E2 is a field extension, it's a uh, separable extension of K. So there is a norm map. You take the kernel that gives you a homomorphism from the weight restriction to GM and the kernel is T. In any, if, you, if you don't really know what, uh, non -split, if you're not used to working with non-split tori, just, just take it as, as it is. It's just a torus, it's just some, some group. And then A is a T, mot, uh, T, T2 torsion, so the two torsion of, uh, of T. So, okay, we have two, these two groups. One is connected, T, and one is a, this is a finite, A. It's actually isomorphic to Z mod 2 cube. And the theorem is that BA, uh, BA is stable rational, but, but its class is, is non-trivial. And that BT is stable rational, and uh, the class of BT times T is different from one. So this, okay, so this gives a negative answer to both question one and question two, uh, assuming that we have a B quadratic field extension. Okay, and a very important point, the questions one and two remain open in when K is algebraically closed. And uh, okay, so as I, as I was already mentioned, when, when K is equal to K bar, there are even more basic questions. So before starting to ask uh, about uh, equivalences, we don't even have an example with the, with the property where BG stable rational can fail. And th this would be really a major result if one could come up with a counterexample to this. So a connected group where BG is not stable rational. Okay, let me just uh, briefly sketch the proof. It's, uh, of course, uh, it has to be of, arith of arithmetic nature. So the first part is some elementary computations, uh, which show that the class of BA is equal to the class of BT times the class of T. So to show that, to show one is equivalent to showing two, basically. To show that one is different from, uh, that BA is different from one is the same as showing that BT is different from T inverse. And then both of these, so both one and two, they are equivalent to, getting this uh, inequality of this sort. So K minus E1 minus E2 minus E3 plus two times a monic polynomial in L uh, is zero. Okay, so assuming that one and two are true by contradiction, we get to this equation. Sorry, uh, uh, what's the point of, so where it's, is it that F of L? I'm is specific or or there exists enough? It's, it's enough. Yeah, f of l is uh, is enough. Basically, what you show is that if you just forget f of l, you get that the, the parenthesis is equal to zero in k zero of stacks, and okay. then since k zero of stacks is a localization, you get some polynomial. You, you multiply by something, and it's still zero, but in k zero of varieties. Okay. So I don't really have control over the polynomial, but it's enough to know that it's a monic polynomial in integer coefficients. Okay. So we have this equation here. Now we uh, we want to, to, to we want to show that this cannot be the case that this is that this thing this uh, quantity really is different from zero. So the way to do it is to construct a homomorphism from k zero varieties to some other ring where we can actually see when something is zero or non-zero. And the way to do it is to consider R the um, the abelian group okay uh, uh, generated by representations of the Galois group of K. Uh, F2, which are F2 linear and finite dimensional. And uh, okay, so this is a, the free group on, on, on these classes. And then we mod out by the, the relation that the class of a sum of a direct sum is the sum of the classes. Okay. And the tensor product actually makes R into a ring. And um, there is a ring homom homomorphism from K0 of R to R of T, which is defined by uh, this property every smooth projective X or even every smooth proper X is sent, uh, the class of X is sent to the, um, the polynomial with, in T with coefficients uh, tal cohomology, with coefficients of two. Okay, so there's a question of how to construct this homomorphism. Basically, if the characteristic of K is zero, then uh, one, this was already done by Ekidal. One uses Bittner presentation. It's uh, basically, it should, it's a presentation of K0 varieties with generators, smooth projective varieties and relations, blow up relations. So for every blow up square, the, uh, you, you have a formula. Uh, and, um, and you basically show that this formula satisfies the, the, this, the blow up relations. 
And then there's also more recently a way to do this in a characteristic different from two because we're, con we're considering F2 coefficients um, using work on of Bondarco, but this goes into motives. So maybe I, I, I won't go into the details, but the point is that this, this new version by Bondarco does not, does not use, this work on Bondarco does not use resolution of singularities like uh, Wittner, but only alterations. Uh, prime to p alterations, prime to two alterations. So th this, yeah, mm, but the, the most elementary case is definitely the case of characteristics. Yeah. Okay, so we apply the homomorphism to this equation. Let's apply it. Let's apply it. So uh, the, the class of P1 is one, P, the cohomology of P1 is uh, one in degree zero and two. So it's one plus T square. So the class of L is just T, goes to T square. And so we get this formula. We get, uh, so if gamma is the Galois group of the extension and gamma I are the subgroups corresponding to the i's, we get the class of F2 of gamma minus the class of the sum of the classes of F2 gamma mod gamma I plus two the class plus twice the class of F2 is equal to zero when you multiply by Ft square. Okay, so it's just uh, apply the relation here. You need to know what P1 does and what it, et al algebras do, yeah, they, they are sent to the permutation representation, to the corresponding permutation representation. Okay, then this equation is, is in R of T, so we can just look at the leading term and we get this equality, F2 of gamma plus F2, here should be F2 squared, because we have two copies of F2. So F2 gamma plus F2 squared is equal to the sum of F2 of gamma mod gamma I. Okay, so this ring uh, R, as a, just as an abelian group, is generated as a Z basis consisting of indecomposable representations. And so this tells us that, that basically we can remove the square brackets, that F2 of gamma plus F2 square, again, should be the direct sum of F2, should be isomorphic to F2, uh, the direct sum of F2 gamma mod gamma I. And this is impossible by Kruel-Schmidt theorem, which basically, the, um, these are in the composable, all, all the summons here are in the composable summons and the, the, the composition of a representation in, in, in the composable summons is unique. So this gives a contradiction. Basically, it tells us that this equation cannot, this cannot be zero. So this cannot be zero. And so the, we were starting from, from this. So, so BA cannot be one and this cannot be one. I'll stop a few seconds if there are questions. Okay, now let's uh, talk about unramified H3 and the integral Hodge conjecture, which are, um, which are also related to this, to the, the class of BG, you will see how. So, um, so this is uh, um, still, I guess the point of the talk is to show that the, the computation of the class of BG is related to many other interesting questions. And the first one was stable rationality. The second one is, a, is a, the integral Hodge conjecture and a ramified cohomology. So when G is a finite group and B is any faithful representation of G, let's, uh, we just work over the complex number. Then Ekedal's theorem is that when the ramified Brouwer group is non-zero, the class is non-trivial. We already, discuss this. And uh, uh, so uh, the ramified Brouwer group is uh, unramified H2. Um, um, so it's the first of a, of a series of uh, unramified HN for every N. And it would be interesting to know if uh, a ramified HN is non-zero, is it true that the class of BG is different from one? Well, in general, this seems, uh, well, I don't know how to do it, but I, can, I know how to do it for N equals three. So the next, the next case. So if the theorem is if a ramified H3 is non-zero, um, then the class of BG is different from one. I'm not really going to define a ramified H3, it's defined in the same. The definition that I gave um, about with smooth projective varieties by taking a smooth projective model does not extend to higher ramified cohomology, but the Galois theoretic definition does with residues, which this time would map into H2, uh, into H2, yeah. Okay. And um, okay, so the, the main ingredient of the proof, I, I will say something about the proof, but the main ingredient is, um, is, is a th an important theorem of Coliotelan and Wazen, which relates a ramified H3, which is a birational invariant, to the Hindergaard conjecture or question for cycles of codimension two, 
which a priori is not a birational invariant. So this was a deep discovery by, by maybe by Wazen, and then it was refined by Kolotelan and Wazen. Okay, and uh, but the point for our um, for for one and concern is that for using this theorem, I can find new counterexamples to new examples where BG is different from one. Uh, and these new examples satisfy BG different from one, but a ramified Brouwer group is equal to zero. So, so this goes beyond Ekedal's, Ekedal's uh, result. And the, uh, the, the groups, uh, sat, um, so uh, these, the groups that I'm considering are groups that were discovered by pair. So, so pair proved, proved that these groups, they satisfy a ramified, uh, a ramified Brouwer group equal to zero, but a ramified H3 different from zero. And so we just apply the theorem to them and we get this. We get new examples like this. So what's the, what is the, what's the flavor of such groups? Like what is the nature? Of the oh yeah, they are, um, they are um, extensions of um, FP to the sixth by FP to maybe also the sixth. They, they are like this. There's a short exact sequence. G fits in a short exact sequence where uh, the kernel is elementary, B, uh, elementary P group and, and the quotient also. Great. So it's so it's a great. So finite group. Uh, so just a, so yeah. Just this is all in the finite group case. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, uh, exactly. No. In the connected group, again, if one could find something where a ramified H three is non-zero, it would be very good because it would prove it would prove the other conjecture. Yeah. The it would it would give an example where BG is not stably rational. So this is only in the finite group case. Okay. Let me very brief give a very brief uh, sketch of proof. I just want to emphasize the, the ingredients in the proof. So first of all, if uh, X is a smooth projective variety um, and I is any integer, then we, we can define this group, uh, this is a finitely generated abelian group, Z uh, to the DI of X. It, it's defined as a singular cohomology intersected with the II classes in, uh, in um, Singular cohomology, but coefficients with C. So this is the III, the, the part of degree I, of B degree II with respect to uh, the Hodge decomposition. And then we, okay, this intersection is a slight uh, abuse of notation. It's really the inverse image of HII inside of a uh, singular cohomology. And then we divide by the algebraic classes. So these are, so we, there is a cycle class map, which goes from the Chow group of codimension I cycles uh, to uh, modular rational equivalence to the singular cohomology, and we mod out by the image. Okay, and then homological notation um, Z two I with the I at the bottom is just um, Z two is defined as Z two the dimension of X minus two I. Okay, and then uh, okay, so this is the first uh, ingredient. K, uh, the second ingredient is the K zero of AB. Uh, it's a free abelian. It's the free abelian group generated by uh, isomorphism classes of abelian of finitely generated abelian groups, modulo, not not as one would expect uh, short exact sequences, but just modulo direct sums. So, like in the other case for the for the Gala, uh, the Galois representations, we did not mod out by short exact sequences, but just by direct sums. And then um, K zero var hat. So K0 hat var is the completion of, uh, of the ring K0 varieties where with L inverted with respect, oh, sorry, with respect to the so-called dimension filtration. So the dimension filtration, uh, okay, I'm, I'm not saying what the dimension filtration is, uh, uh, but I'm, I'm basically saying it. I'm just saying that the sequence YM modulo L to the M goes to zero when, you have, when the dimension of YM minus M becomes arbitrarily, length, arbitrarily negative. So, this, so I'm defining the topology basically. Actually, a question about the K0 ab. Uh, yeah. It's since it's not the naive thing. How like how should I? Like, how does it differ from? I guess the it's the as a it's um it has a basis. It's a free abelian group on uh, the class of Z, the class of uh, and the class of Z mod P to the n for all P prime and all n integer greater than ah, I see. equal to one. So just yeah. Yeah. It's basically just a way to talk about the difference of two abelian groups, but uh, you're keeping all the information apart from that. 
Okay, and then, okay, uh, we have uh, this completion of uh, K0 varieties, and then we have these maps. K0 var goes into K0 stacks, and which goes into K0, K, K hat zero var. And uh, okay, for any integer, for any integer i, we, we can, so here you see the, de the definition that I gave about uh, z to the i, you can extend this into a, an additive homomorphism, which is continuous, where k0, k0 has uh, the discrete topology. And um, so you have this homomorphism z to the i, uh, z to, to i, sorry, such that when x is more projective, Oh, sorry, yeah, it should be z to the i lower, lower index. When x is more projective, z to the i of, uh, of z to i of x modulo l to the m is just a z of 2i plus 2m of x. Okay, so, okay, as you can see, I, I put a, um, a minus sign when it's a definition and a, and a dot when it's a fact. So it is a fact that this uh, homomorphism is well-defined. And it is also a fact that the class of BG is equal to the limit of v to, v to the m of g multiplied by l to the minus dimension of v. Uh, this is really not difficult to prove. It's just that uh, I, I really don't have the time. It's, um, you just, uh, yeah, it's very simple. And the point is the following. So since, since you have this description of bg as a limit, the class of bg as a limit of uh, very simple varieties like this, and the z to the i is continuous, you can basically take m large enough in this, for m large enough, you will have that the class of bg and the, and the, the right hand side will have the same z to, z to i. So we do exactly that. So when m is large enough, uh, we can find some x, which is birationally equivalent to v to, vm mod g, smooth projective, such that you can write down the class of v, Vm mod G as the class of X plus stuff of smaller dimension. Here, of course, you're using, uh, you're choosing compactifications and using resolution of singularities multiple times. Okay, and then, then what do we get? Uh, we get that Z minus four of BG is actually equal to Z four of X plus stuff of smaller dimension, we just, uh, but since four is very small, this, this, uh, the contribution of this is uh, going to cancel out. So this is, uh, we get this, I'm not claiming that you should actually follow this equality from what I'm saying, but it's just some simple computations that you can do. And you get the first equality, and then you get the second equality by, a, so, okay, the, uh, this part, you see, it's um, if X fails, if the integral Hodge conjecture fails for X, then z minus four of bg is different from zero. And so bg is non-trivial. However, it's difficult to, I mean, x can be very complicated. So what, how, how do we know that the integral conjecture fails for x? Well, it's, it comes from, from uh, how do we know anything about the integral conjecture for x? We know that the obstruction to the failure to the Hodge conjecture is exactly the unramified h3. And this is, of course, the deep theorem that was proved by Coliotelan and Wazan that we use as inputs. Okay, so uh, so when this group here, a, a ramified H3 is non-zero, then Z minus four of BG is non-zero. And so BG cannot be one because Z minus four of a point is going to be to be zero because Z minus four, the homology in degree, homology in degree minus four doesn't, is, is just zero. Okay, so this is the, these are the ingredients of the proof. Okay, I have, yeah, okay, I, I can do it. So the, um, the third um, property that I want to discuss, so we discussed the stable rationality of BG, we discussed a ramified H3 as the generalization of a ramified H2, and then we can discuss the mixed state property, which is another property of BG, this was defined by Totaro. Um, so, okay, let's start from the, the definition in general, of course, I'm, I'm here is the formal definition. So a motive is a mixed state. Uh, so the M is the big category of uh, Robotsky motives. So a motive M is mixed state. If um, it belongs to, to a certain uh, sub triangulated subcategory of uh, DM, which basically, which is a, 
generated by left shed's motives. So the motive, the compactly supporting motives of affine space. So for example, PN belongs here, Grassmannians belongs here, the class of BGM, BGM, which is P infinity, belongs here. So it basically a motive belongs here. If you can write down some diagram which only involves affine spaces and then um, so sums of dip, sums and differences of affine spaces, and you can express the motive as a limit of this diagram. It's a call limit of this diagram. Um, okay, when G is a finite group, Totaro uh, defined the motive of BG, the compactly supported motive of BG. Um, and so we can ask, is this motive mixed state or not? In particular, the uh, mm, Totaro made, uh, asked a question which relates the mixed state property with all these, with a number of properties about BG. And in particular, he asked the following, is it true that M, that the compactly supporting motive of BG is mixed state if and only if BG, uh, the class of BG is trivial? Okay. Uh, okay, so the, uh, again, this is a, another question of the form BG equals to one, some other property is true. Okay. And um, I, of, uh, it would be very nice to give a positive answer to this question or, or even to come up with a counterexample. I cannot do that, but I can show, I can prove something weaker. So for every, uh, to, to, say, uh, to say what I'm what I want to, uh, what I proved, I need to introduce these invariants by, they, they were defined by Ekedal in, in, in the 2009 paper. So these are, uh, these are homomorphisms um, of groups EI from K0 of stacks to K0 of ab, the one, about, the one before, the one we introduced before. So a billion, finitely generated abelian groups modulo direct sums, basically. And this homomorphism is defined as the class of X modulo L to the M goes to the singular cohomology of, uh, of degree I plus two M of X. Okay, and again, when X is smooth and projective. And again, you can show that this is indeed a group of homomorphism by, um, by using the Bittner presentation, for example. Okay, and then one can try to compute these invariants. We have, so the zeroth invariant is, uh, is just, the, is always the integers. And the, um, the E1 invariant, I, I didn't write it down, it's, it's always trivial. And then E2 is the ramified Brouwer group of the field of invariants. It would be nice to know if E3 was equal to a ramified H3, but I don't know that. But what, I, what is known is that when BG is equal, the class of BG is equal to one, then EI of BG is zero for all I. You, you know, when, I, when BG is equal to one, so it's the class of a point, you can ju you just plug in the point here in the, in, the, in the definition and you just get zero everywhere apart from degree zero. Okay, so if you can show that some EI is non-zero for I different than, than zero, then, uh, then um, you, you just prove that BG, the class of BG is non-trivial. So what I, uh, my theorem is if BG has the mixed state property, so if MC of BG is mixed state, then all these invariants vanish. So of course the goal would be to prove that the class of BG is, is one, but th this is maybe indication of that, but it doesn't prove it. Okay, and just, uh, I just wanna give the idea of the proof, just the, yeah, even less than, than the other one. I just want to say that when uh, the compactly supporting motive of BG is mixed state, so is the, the motive of GLN mod G, uh, where, where GLN is some, G embeds into GLN using some faithful representation. So, so you're, then, not, so you're, so you're not, you, you'd kind of expect, you know, say this is not what you're doing, that you get a map from the, um, from that DM, I now lost track what it was called, that category of, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, two uh, K naught of ab, and then you show that this plays well with, with exactly, uh, okay. yeah, oh, it, is it, it's pretty much, pretty, yeah, it, it's it almost, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, okay, exactly. Great. Uh, so let me, yeah, it's here. The point is that this DM of DM of, um, you, uh, yeah, you can't, you can't really take that DM because it, it would be huge. It would be too big. But what you do is you pass to GLN mod G and um, GLN mod G, uh, so, so uh, GLN mod G is just a variety. So it, it lives in the geometric motives. 
And uh, the first step is to show that when the class is, uh, is when the class of a mixed state motive is a polynomial in, is a rational function of L, first step. Um, and then as, uh, as Ravi was saying, uh, you, you have to, you map, you consider the map new, nu, from K0 varieties to K0 of uh, geometric motives, which by work of Bondarco is uh, K0 of uh, Chow motives, which is, uh, you know, projective, mo uh, uh, the, the one that Grothendieck originally defined, the much smaller one. And then basically what you end up proving is that you would like BG, the class of, you would like a mixed state to imply that BG is one here, but you prove that it's one here in this, in this ring here. Oh, sorry. And, uh, and then, uh, okay, and by proving that it's one here, you, you also prove that the i is factored through this map nu, so you, you would have k0 of ab would be at the right of uh, at the right of this, and then and then if, if and then you get one, yeah, you get that the class the the, the, I, the i's are trivial, right? So what the theorem says is really if if the, the uh, if mc of bg is mixed state, then nu of bg is one, uh, yeah, or or yeah, one or zero, whatever. Um, I guess it, I guess it should be zero in here. Okay. And um, all right. And then uh, okay. Yeah, that's all. Great. Thanks. That's all. Yeah. Okay. So thank you for.